Hey there, Mini Wargamers. The Cooler here for another fantasy bat rep, another teaching bat rep with Mini Wargamer Dave. And this time I'm actually bringing 1500 points of dwarves against 1500 points of chaos. So stay tuned and remember to go to miniwargaming.com slash challenge to challenge any of us. And here is a 1500 point Warhammer fantasy battle. We work for you to play. Mini Wargaming speed the cooler bat rep. Mini, hold on. Footage on there from nope, deleted it all. Nice. White balance? Didn't check that. Okay. So this will be unedited just like before? Yep. All right, sounds good. Oh, it's already recording. It is recording. Awesome. Okay, anyway. Uh, yeah, so we've set up the terrain. Order sediment. There's a destruction settlement on the left here. Uh, mysterious forest. Two walls. So minus one to hit if you're behind it. An ordinary hill and Sigmarite signal, sigil. Basically, if he gets his within six inches of this, then he has to reroll successful ward saves because he's destruction and I am not. Now we're gonna roll off for who gets to deploy first. I gave you the Slanesh die. I have Nurgle. Nurgle's with me, man. He and my Tau. <laughs> Team Nurgle. <laughs> anyway, see? This is what happens. That's what happens, yes. So you get the option to deploy your units first. Uh -huh. Now the way this works, you'll deploy one unit, I'll deploy one unit. Whoever gets them all out first will get plus one to who goes first when you roll out for who goes first. So you want to get your units out first, if you want to go first. Okay, then I want to go first. Then you should deploy your unit first. matter. What the heck do I do first? Oh, you know what? We didn't actually even go over our armies. Yeah. But I guess we'll go over them in the course of this game. And as we, we could deploy them. Well, those are, yeah. How you have 12 inch deployment. Okay. We're just going to do a regular, like, pitched battle kind of scenario. Uh, <laughs> sure. All right. Warhound. I'm going to put 10 Thunderers right in this building. I enjoy your lime green movement tray. I found that here. Really? Yeah. So they're inside this building. So what does that mean? Being Ma inside the building does what? Well, it makes you stubborn. Aren't you really uh, stubborn? No, not everyone. Okay. Those guys are. But being in the building, basically when you want to go in, you choose 10 units who can fight. Um, against 10 defenders who choose to defend. Then you do your combat, winner wins. If the loser, if the guys occupying the building lose, they flee out of the opposite end of the building. You guys take the building. Uh, you can have up to five guys shoot per floor. We usually list this as like ground floor and then an upper floor, so 10 guys per building. That's how we've always played anyway. So just because we have really weird shaped buildings. Yeah, they're kind of they're like shooting through the straw roof. Yeah, we could. I have no problem with it. Yeah. So that's that's buildings. So long as they're in touching your deployment, you can deploy in them. So even if this building was, for example, like right on the edge of 12, yeah. I can still technically deploy in it. And that goes for you as well. On the edge of 12, on the other side of 12? Not if it's past. If it's outside of your deployment, you'd have to move into it. If it's half and half? If it's half and half, you can. If even just a, like a bit of it was touching, you still can. Okay. That's how it's been explained to me, so. Right. and made sense to me in the rules. Sounds good to me. So my turn next? Yeah. Are the these guys affected by terrain if they're on this hill? The hill really doesn't do anything. It's plus one to combat resolution if you charge downhill. Okay, so I'll start on this hill. You're going to put a unit of 20 iron breakers. Right in the middle. Okay. Oh man. Now here I've got seventeen Chaos Warriors of Chaos. <laughs> warriors of Chaos, seventeen. You didn't hear that. 
I, I, I'm happy with them. That's good. Which ones are these? Are these? Okay, the I spend like ten hours painting. Which ones? What? The shield ones or the halberd ones? Okay, so these ones are armed with halberds, and they also have a shield to give them a plus one to their armor save. Yeah, so they have a three up armor save. And these guys and have, they have plus corn, one and they have yep. mark of corn. Corn. So they have plus one attack for being corn, plus one strength for using halberds, and plus one of their armor save for having a shield. Yeah. And because they have a halberd, they can't get a parry save because you can't use a halberd and a shield. Correct. But you still get the plus one armor save from it, which is really good. Then I deploy. It's going to take another 10 Thunderers. Line them up. Yeah. They're in the building. They're in the building. Okay. Yeah. Now, what are the rules for going through terrain? It doesn't really do anything to infantry. Uh, if cavalry try and move through it, they have to take dangerous terrain checks. But we don't know what kind of forest that is. Ooh, so, so it might be something beneficial. It might be nothing. It might cause wounds to you. It'll do one of those, usually. What about river? Same thing. Yep. Okay, let's stay away from the river. Probably not. Put another 10 Thunderers in this building over here. Okay. So, Calvary, it's not a good thing for the forest. Right. What does that do? Dangerous train checks. Yep. Stay away. And my guys just fell off the table. So my squad of Chaos Knights, they have a standard bear. And what else do they have? Champion, I'm pretty sure. Oh no, you didn't give them the champion, you gave them the musician. Musician, yeah. And Mark of Corn. So they have frenzy. Of frenzy. Yeah. Which yep. means I have to try to charge you every turn and I get plus one attack when I do charge you. Yeah. And you can try and fight it by doing a leadership check to not try and charge. But why would I want to do that? Because if you fail a charge, you only go the highest D6. You have a movement of eight. Ah, uh, yeah, you're right. Yep. So you finished deploying first. So there's my other Ironbreaker. Well, my technically my Lord hasn't deployed yet. So he's not there yet. I can and then still will finish first. Yeah, looks like I will. Okay, so I got my giant here. Does he get negative modifiers for going through a forest? Is that a no, no. or no. you don't know? No. That is a no. That's a no. So he can like bash through this forest and uh, blow your house down. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. I'll just deploy him there. Because giants are fun. And it looks like this will be just ridiculous amounts of fun. And my little dwarf lord's gonna sit with his iron breakers. Stay. And my chaos lord is gonna sit with these guys here. All my units have full command, so they've got musician, standard bearer, sergeants. They don't all have standards, but that's what they are. The points were paid. We agreed. Same with mine. Yep. Standard bearer, musician, champion. Champion. Now we roll for who gets to go first. You get plus one of yours? Yeah. Oh yeah, we're using it. We gotta use the... Mine. Oh, okay, this time I get corn then. Told you. Five and four. And I have plus one, doesn't even matter. Just Nurgle's looking out for me. What happens if we tied? We would have rolled again. Okay, so there's an, like you're getting a bonus because you're Tau? No, I'm just kidding, it's a different game. Oh, Team Nurgle. Team Nurgle. Nurgle looks out for me. Is we've got Nurglings all over the Fire Warriors. All right. So, first step, declare charges. I can pre-measure in this game. 
I only moved three inches and I charged 2d6 minus one because I'm a dwarf. So I'm probably not even gonna charge this game. That's fine. So I'm fine. I'm not gonna charge and so movement. So these guys are actually going to march. So one inch six to inch. turn. Yeah, they can march double their movement. Which is six inches? Yeah. Move That's out awesome. five. And these guys are just gonna move. Magic phase would be next. I don't have any magic because I'm a dwarf. Shooting phase follows that. So he could shoot the giant, but he's in that forest. Now he doesn't benefit from cover because he's a giant. Or he could shoot them. Can't reach them yet. All right, well, we're gonna shoot the giant. These guys in the house here. So we got 10 shots. Ballistic skill three, shooting past half. So I'm ballistic skill two, so I'm hitting on fives. My guns are really good, so they get plus one to hit. So I'm hitting on fours. All right. Four. And your toughness one. I'm probably toughness high. Probably. Uh, this is a strength four gun with armor piercing. Giant is toughness five. So five to wound. Two wounds. Two wounds. And I'm pretty sure you don't have an armor save. What? Because you're a giant. You have six wounds instead of an armor save. Oh, okay. Well, that's not bad. So you're down to four. Um, um, hold on. Wait, he's got Mark and Nurgle. That minus one to hit. Minus one, your bliss is good. Uh-oh, forgot he had that. Yeah, so that's a reroll. All right. Why don't you get a better roll now? So it's five to hit. Yeah. Same. That's the exact same thing. And fives to wounds. Three wounds. Oh, that's the worst for me. Yeah. Why don't we go with the original? <laughs> Make me re-roll. Okay, so he's down to three wounds. Oh, Razafrak, Razafrak. That's all I got. Okay. So then we would resolve combat. There are no combats. Your turn. All right, so Mark and Urgle. Minus one blitz is going to shoot at him. Yeah. Got to remember that. These guys have poison attacks. So they do a wound automatically if they hit with a six. Okay. So Charges first, so they have to try not to charge me. Okay. Actually, uh, let's, let's put that out here in the middle so people can see the rolling. I just moved it because you're going to be moving. Yeah. That is a fair assumption. So 2d6. Okay. These guys, they have leadership eight. And they can see these guys, so. They fail it. They have to try and charge them. Okay. So they can't. Well, you roll 3d6. Okay. You Five. might actually make this charge. I'm just saying, they. Huh? I need another die, please. How far away are you right now? 22 inches. You're moving 8. So you need to roll 10. No, you don't. I can do math. You need to roll 14. So good luck. <laughs> so I roll 3d6 and take the two highest? Yeah. But they move six towards these guys. Okay. So that means I have to pivot, right? Well, they'll, they'd get a, a free turn because it's a charge, and then they'd move six. Because that's the way it works. So you'd turn and then move up six. All right. That's them. Do you have any charges that you'd like to. <coughs> the answer is no. All, my, all the rest of my guys, I believe that they are movement four. Well, the guys that matter, anyway. And I can just decide to not, to, to march. Is that right? Yep, you can march and you'll move double your movement. And I do that now. Yes. Because I'm not going to charge them. Right. And I don't have magic. Yep. Magic is before movement, right? Magic's after movement. Oh, it is after. It goes charge, move, magic, shoot, combat. Go up to that far. 
I'm not going to charge you. <laughs> you got nothing to worry about. What do you mean you're not going to charge I don't think I could even make it right now. 13 inches away. So I'm 10 inches. So I'd have to roll 9 on 2d6 to get to you. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. You know what? I'm going to go up an extra two. Call your bluff. See if you're really not going to move. Uh, these guys. I will move them 14 inches. Because they can. And that wall will give minus one to hit if you stand behind it. Minus one for me? For, you for to me hit. to shoot you. Oh. It's harder for me to hit you. Am I behind it right now? Am I behind for both of these guys? No. You'd have to be up against it. Like, if they moved over a little bit, they could be behind it. Because you have to at least have, like, 25%. If I move these guys in front of them, would they give them a, some sort of save? Not from my guys in the building. If we were on, like, the same level, but we're higher up. Okay, well, I'll move over a little bit. Can I do that? Am I cheating? You had lots of movement. Okay. Yeah, I didn't move up 14. Okay, so these guys are going to move up 8. These guys are going to move up 14. Let's go up here. Oh, hold on. We'll go up behind here a little bit. You like that plan? Mm -hmm. Giant, movement six. So I'm gonna go 12 then, through a Z forest. And you roll for what is what kind of forest this is. So roll a D6. D6 I shall roll. It is a five. So it is a venom thicket. Venom thicket sounds like I'm going to be struck with some sort of poison attacks. You have poison attacks while you're in it, uh, but you also have to take a dangerous terrain check. On a one, you take a wound. Okay. Roll the die. Get a one. So I'm down to two wounds. Seriously? Seriously. Well, that sucks. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. No armor saves allowed. So you just take a wound. And... That's me. Dwarf turn two. Yep. Are you getting ready? Because I'm getting pretty close here. Um, we're going to move back two inches. Why would you move back? Come on. How far are you? Hmm. Hmm. They're gonna sidestep two inches. Hmm. Why would you sidestep? And magic now shooting. We're gonna kill that giant this turn. These ten guys are gonna shoot the giant again. Yep. So they're within half. So the only negative modifier they have right now is your Nurgle. Okay. So they hit on fours. Okay. You're gonna kill my giant. Hopefully. I don't want to have guys getting thrown into pants and thrown at each other and fun. hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that's a good roll. What do you need now? Five. Five. He's dead. I just killed him. I just killed my giant. That's no fun. Something happens when he dies, right? He lets out a fart and he kills people. He falls down. There's actually a template in your book. Of like a giant falling. <laughs> At least it's in the orc one for sure. Yeah, it is in the orc one. I saw it yesterday when Dan was here. All right, well let's just forget about that. Yeah. Well. Unless it can affect my warhounds. Do you really care if I look it up? No. Nah. All right. If there even anything exists. Past half and you're behind a wall. Or do I want to shoot these guys? Let's shoot the hounds. So it's minus one for shooting past half, so they're hitting on fours. And it's minus another one because you're behind a wall, so they're hitting on five. Didn't mean to do that. So three hits, and your toughness three. Uh -huh. These are strength four, so threes to wound. So two of them die. 
Two of these guys dead? Yeah. Does it matter which one? And take them off from the far ones. Not that it's going to make a difference, but your general's right here. So when they do their uh, panic check, you want to be within 12 of that guy. 